All right, so um, in this video, I'm going to talk about Arrow's impossibility theorem. Kenneth Arrow, um, uh, I think he proved his theorem in 1950s. I'm terrible with uh, uh, dates, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, a brilliant uh, economist um, basically formalizes the problem of preference aggregation. And as I, as I gave you, this set of agents and many set of alternatives, any, uh, any set of alternatives, and then preferences over those alternatives, we create this set of preferences. So we should be looking at a, a function which maps uh, every preference profile to some transitive, reflexive, and uh, a complete uh, a, a, a binary relation or preference relation over this set of alternatives, so the social preference. The question is, do we have good voting rules, good aggregation rules? Well, uh, his theorem uh, formally shows that, unfortunately, we don't. All right, so here's how it reads. If a voting rule, and a preference aggregation rule, satisfies three assumptions, which I'm going to discuss next, assumptions one, two, and three, then this rule must be dictatorship. All right? So that means there is only one rule which satisfies these three assumptions. All right? And so Condorcet does not satisfy, well, it doesn't satisfy assumption one. Uh, Borda does not satisfy assumption three. Some other rules you can think of will violate either assumption one or assumption two or assumption three. But at the end, there's only one and only one rule satisfies these three assumptions, uh, which is dictatorship. What does that mean? That means all social rankings must be the rankings of one individual. So there is one guy, one agent in the society. So remember, our voting rule is from PN to P. So this the set of preference profiles into set of preferences. We may include indifferences here as well. So there's no harm. So a voting rule which maps set of uh, preference profiles into a set of uh, preferences that satisfies one, two, three is dictator means there's an agent, I, let's I star. So this guy, we call him dictator. So given any preference profile, uh, well, what is P? Well, look at this I guy's preferences, the I, I start guy's preferences. Well, you know what? This social ranking is going to be exactly his. If we look at another preference profile, uh, where the i guy, i star guy, has a different preferences, and everybody else has also different preferences. Well, what is the social ranking? Well, it should be this p i star still. All right. So uh, this is a very, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, how should I say it? Uh, unpleasant uh, voting rule. All right. Dictatorship is like. There's one guy and whatever he wants becomes the social ranking, all right? But just to make sure that you understand what the hack dictatorship means, again, let me give you a, a, an example. We have three alternatives, X, Y, Z, all right? And we have three agents, A, oh, the set of alternatives are also A. So let's call these agents as B, C, and D. And let's say B is the dictator, all right? So let's say B ranks X over Y, Y over Z, all right? However, agent C ranks Z over Y and Y over X. D also ranks Z over Y and Y over X. And in fact, let's say we have 100, all right? We have 100 uh, voters. Um, <clears throat> so let's say 50 of them ranks Z, Y, X. And well, well, not well. By the way, C and D therefore does not make any difference, so we don't need two. So we have hundred voters. Ninety-nine of them rank exactly the opposite of what Agent B ranks. So this is the preference profile. Let's suppose. Well, then you know what? The social ranking in this case is going to be X, Y, Z. 
Well, according to Borda and according to Condorcet, ZYX should be the uh, social ranking. However, the dictatorship says, oh, you know what? The social ranking is going to be what agent B star, I mean B, which is the dictator, uh, ranks. So it should be X, Y, Z because he is the dictator. We don't really care about everybody else. So those 99 people, how they rank those alternatives are, 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 are irrelevant. So the social ranking should be this. So this is clearly not democracy. Well, it's dictatorship. So one guy dictates what the social ranking will be. So it's, it's not a good rule. But this is the only rule which satisfies these three assumptions. All right. So for that reason, we call it impossibility theorem. So it's impossible to come up with a nice voting rule which has nice properties as those three assumptions uh, highlight. So what are those three assumptions? Well, the first one, basically, the voting rule should never give Condorcet cycles, all right? I mean, um, there shouldn't be any profile where the voting rule gives you, oh, uh, there is no first best. Uh, so this rule eliminate those because, again, as I said, you know, those rules could be good most of the times, but sometimes they give, they, they give error, all right? Like the examples I gave you in the previous videos. So let's look at you know, voting rules, which never gives Condorcet cycles. Assumption three, I'm going to come to assumption two. Assumption three is the IIA. Remember, the board account violates this assumption. Uh, independence of irrelevant alternatives, right? Independence, independence of irrelevant, irrelevant alternatives, alternatives, and hence IIA. It says the social ranking between any two alternative, X and Y, X and Y can be any two alternative, should depend only on how agents in the society rank uh, X versus Y, uh, and do not depend on how they rank other alternatives. So if you add a third alternative, although the agent's ranking between X and Y is the same, the adding or subtracting a third or fourth alternative shouldn't really change the ranking between X and Y. Okay? So, as I said, the board account voting violates this uh, property. So, eliminate board account. It's not good enough. So, we're looking for the perfect uh, rule. Well, what about the assumption two? Assumption two, I think, it's, is the most straightforward uh, property. It's like, well, if everybody prefers X to Y, so everyone in the society says X is better than Y. So there's a unanimous agreement about which alternative is better than uh, Y, which is X. Uh, I mean, which alternative is the best when it comes to X versus Y? All right. So if everybody ranks X over Y, well, then uh, the social preferences must rank X over Y. All right. So the social preferences must agree with the agreement within the society. All right. So here, for example, this rule does satisfy because um, in this case, X is uh, better than Y, but Y is not better than X. So Y. So if this is the preference profile. All right, Y, X, Z. Well, then obviously everybody ranks uh, Y over X, everybody, and hence the social ranking is Y over X. But you know what? The social ranking is exactly as, uh, as, as, as the same as the other agents because agent B is the dictator. All right. So the dictatorship uh, does satisfy these three properties and it's only rule that satisfy these properties. So, in some sense, uh, this is a very nice, very strong result. In some sense, uh, it says, unfortunately, um, you know, those properties, uh, IIA, uh, sort of, uh, this is uh, sort of weaker than Predo efficiency. Um, and then the, you know, no Condorcet cycle. So, those properties, unfortunately, are not, um, uh, uh, are not consistent with the democracy because the only rule that satisfies uh, these properties uh, a dictatorship, which is not a democratic rule. All right. 
So this is what the Erov's impossibility theorem says. I hope that was clear.